not a skidoo. So welcome back. A couple of things have transpired since the last video on that skidoo and how I came to possession of it. And, uh, you know, I gave a pretty good explanation of I was actually feeling a sense of guilt in selling it. And uh, one of my subscribers actually commented, don't feel bad. And because when you look at it, it's a win for everybody. And the way he explained it was the club raised over $17,000 in that raffle, pure profit. The dealer sold a sled. You know, I became, I, I uh, came in possession of that sled. I was then, then able to sell it below cost to a new buyer. So when you look at all the, uh, all the transactions in this, everybody came ahead. So really nobody was, should have any sense of guilt or anything like that. So uh, after um, posted that video, I, uh, I posted the sled shortly thereafter and within uh, 48 hours, actually it was 24 hours, that skidoo was sold and went out to a new owner up in Maine. So, and he was very excited to get it. His uh, daughter rides the same sled and he was looking to get one for either himself or somebody else in the family. So that skidoo is going off to a new, uh, new owner, happy owner, and uh, somebody's gonna enjoy it. Uh, so right after the uh, skidoo was sold, we posted the Axis and the Axis was uh, for sale for about a week, week and a half. I was concerned that I was gonna sit on it for a lot longer because of the mileage on it. And if you didn't know, the Axis had about 8,000 miles on it. So just to give that you know perspective, uh, that's basically the equivalent of riding from Massachusetts all the way to California and pretty much all the way back. So 8,000 miles and that sled, the engine was never opened up and uh, never, never left me stranded on the trail. And I know a lot of people say, well, you gotta rebuild them every 5,000 miles or anything like that. I don't, I don't believe that with the newer 800s or the newer engines. As long as you take care of them properly, good oil, good fuel, proper warm up sequences, and you don't beat them and you store them correctly in the off season, uh, a lot of these machines can go for a lot of miles uh, uh, without major uh, rebuilds. So, so yeah, so the access is gone, the skidoo is gone, and uh, that's what I picked up. So pretty much between the sale of the skidoo and the access, uh, I got a new sled about for about fifteen hundred bucks out of my own pocket. So with that being said, why don't we go ahead and take a look at what I bought and what the plans are. All right, so here's a new horse, 2023 Polaris XC 850 137. Um, so to be fully transparent, four weeks have passed since I picked this thing up. And since then I put 500 miles on it over uh, two weekends. And uh, so I've had some seat time in it and I'll, I'll give you my thoughts. But before I tell you that, we'll just kind of review what it is. It's an 850 with a 137, 1.35 Cobra. It's got the QS3s all the way around in the front, uh, front track shock and in the rear. It's unstudded. It's not a ice cobra or anything like that. Um, so again, I put 500 miles on it. Um, I just uh, came back from my dealer and we've had two issues with it. So again, we're being fully transparent. Issue number one, the fuel gauge. Uh, I only read three quarters of a tank, even when it is filled all the way up to the neck. And the second issue is uh, I had a check engine light for the exhaust valve positioning. So took care of that. Basically the, uh, the sled just needed to go on the digital wrench at Polaris and basically go through the relearn process on the exhaust valves to kind of reset home in open position. Once they did that, they said there were no issues. I only got that check engine light once and I never went, never came back again and I pretty much was running this thing through the paces as well. So, uh, and then it was just the fuel gauge or the fuel sender on the uh, on the pump. It had uh, come loose inside the tank and basically all they had to do was kind of just put it back together and make sure it's all set. So, as far as what I've done to the sled since I bought it, uh, one thing, three things I've done really I put the heavy duty springs on the rear, pulled the stock ones out, and uh, for my weight, when I'm fully uh, geared up, I'm 5'11", and when I'm 
fully geared up. I'm around 285, 280, 290. So I changed those springs even before I rode the sled. Another thing I did was I uh, installed PowerMad uh, handguards with the mirrors right on both sides. These absolutely work great. Nice big mirror. They don't vibrate really too bad. And uh, I like having them up at my line of sight. So when I'm riding, um, all I have to do is just glance over to the mirror and see if anybody's behind me. Because in comparison, uh, Polaris does make a mirror kit. There you go, right down there in the part of the panel. And honestly, I don't like them there because if you're in motion, you have to look down and figure out where you are and then your eyes are not on the trail. So I don't like uh, where those mirrors were. And honestly, I, I just have a feeling that because of where they're situated on the bodywork, uh, you're gonna see more of your shins and your knees than actually what's behind you. So I opted for those power mad hand guards with the mirrors and they work great. Keep my hands warm and everything else. Another thing I did was uh, install the RCA outlet on it for the heated shield. That's pretty much uh, mandatory these days. You absolutely need it. And then uh, I installed the 12 volt, which is underneath the, uh, the liner. So that charges the phone. That works out pretty well. So no issues with that. And uh, so I love the sled. I'll just be perfectly honest with you. Uh, Huge power difference over the 850, uh, with the 850 or the 800. Even in break-in mode, uh, this thing had a has a ton more power than the 800. Uh, I was actually kind of surprised. So right now, like I said, the sled uh, has 508 miles on it. It's pretty much fully out of break-in mode. When it was in break-in mode, I used two gallons of oil, and but and again, that's all part of the process. And other than those two minor issues, completely happy with the sled. So, one other thing I did was I installed scratchers, and that's a, a uh, product from One Rig Design. And what it does, it uses uh, SPI ice scratchers, and then they make a mount that basically fits in the pocket of the existing rail, so you don't have to drill. And it actually works pretty good as far as the mounting system. But what I've noticed with the sled as compared to the axis in the switchback with the pro ride suspension if i didn't have my scratchers down it would run warm once but once i put the scratchers down on the axis it was right around 123 125 degrees all day long this sled actually runs very cold um even over 500 miles i only had one or two occasions when it even approached 130 degrees for the most part this thing runs between 105 and 113 degrees without the scratchers down. And I was kind of surprised. So I can't tell you how those scratchers work because I really haven't had an opportunity or reason to use them yet, but they're there nonetheless. And uh, I'll hopefully I'll have a report on those later in the season. So, but yeah, as far as the QS3s, I like those a lot. I had the Walker Evans on the, uh, on the axis with, you know, 12 or 14 clicks positions on whatever they were in the Fox the QS threes. They're very simple to use There's just three positions One two and three So one is basically the stock setting two is 20 percent stiffer and three is 80 percent stiffer So when I first ride when I first started riding it, I had everything in number one and after about 350 miles, basically I uh, put, them in the, put the front end in two. It made the front end react a lot better than it was in number one. One was just too soft. So one thing I have noticed is this sled does dart on uh, trails that are you know kind of worn in, not freshly groomed. Freshly groomed, this thing rails like you wouldn't believe. But as soon as the, uh, the trails are kind of beat up, this thing does like to dart. So... Um, Currently looking at a couple options. Maybe I might put some Woody's Navigators on here, or I may just put dualies on it because on the axis, I had the same issue with it darting. And I put a set of dualies on it and the condition completely went away. 
and some say uh, it, it contributes to a little bit of pushing on it, but honestly, I never had that issue with it. Um, on the axis with toolies on it, I could rail that thing, and I never worried about blowing through a quarter at all. So, but yeah, so right now, 500 miles, completely happy with it. Uh, the next trip is February vacation, going up with the, with the family, my wife and my daughter, and a couple other people. And yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna continue putting some more miles on it. All right, so there's a new horse. Let me know what you think. Uh, so for the uh, for the color scheme, red, white, and blue, we've nicknamed this sled Captain America for obvious reasons. So uh, we're gonna continue putting mileage on it and uh, hope for the best. Hopefully, <clears throat> those two issues that we had are the only two that we're gonna have uh, with it. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, everybody is perfectly aware of uh, the challenges Polaris has had in the past three or four years where they have focused more on uh, quantity versus quality. And um, because of that, they've had some growing pains and we'll call it that. So, but uh, this sled does have a two year warranty on it and uh, we're gonna hopefully, we're not gonna need it. We'll see, but if, it, if we do have issues with it, I will definitely report back on it and let you know how it's going and uh, the experiences I'm having with Polaris. Uh, Cause um, you know, it's one of those things with the winners that we've been having the last four or five, 10 years, honestly. So it's winners like this, which is the reason I would say I would never buy a new sled because the return on investing on it really kind of, if you look at it, it makes no sense, right? Cause with the season getting shorter and shorter and shorter and what are you riding maybe? 20 days out of the year, right? Um, I would never, I, that's why I said I would never buy a new sled because the math on it doesn't work out. But with all the stars aligning and everything else, <clears throat> and at the end of the day, it was 1500 bucks to get me on a new sled. So it was kind of a no brainer. But <clears throat> uh, if that didn't work out, I would still continue to buy used. But, uh, but anyway, we'll continue to uh, uh, put miles on this thing. Uh, so like I said, the next trip is uh, two weeks away, uh, my February vacation, and then uh, we'll have the uh, the wife and the daughter out there and a couple other people and put some miles on it and see how it goes. So definitely let me know how your winter is going, because I know in the Northeast, it's been absolutely brutal. Uh, I'm, I feel fortunate that we had two good back-to-back -back weekends, and we were able to put 500 miles on this thing, because uh, I'm actually going up to Sherbrooke uh, this week for work. And I was looking at the weather before, uh, just to see. And uh, it's gonna be 50 degrees in Sherbrooke, Canada in February, which is crazy, so. But uh, yeah, definitely let me know how your season's going. Hopefully it's better than uh, than us in, in the continental US. I think all the snow right now is up in, up in Alaska. So Garrett, if you're riding, awesome, so. Uh, all right, so that's it. So if you have any questions, comments, thoughts, concerns, whatever it may be, Go ahead and leave me a comment in the comments box and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day. See ya.